everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I identify cast iron. So today I have a restoration project that I'm doing for my friend Will Stelter. This is a part off of a power hammer that he uses for blacksmithing and for knife making. And he's asked me to repair it, but before I get to repairing it, I need to kind of identify what kind of cast iron this is. Uh, it will also help me with uh, material choice on how I want to fill it, how I want to prep before and after it's been welded. So, but the first thing on any cast iron welding project is just to identify what it is. And then there's two main common types of cast iron you might run into, and that's ductile iron and gray iron. And I got a simple experiment that we can do with some simple tools to be able to identify which one it is. And in my brain, I kind of think of ductile iron and gray iron like a cookie. Uh, to better explain, I'll show you real fast. So picture cast iron like cookies. One of them is gonna be brittle like gray iron. The other ductile iron is gonna be soft and chewy, much like a, a chewy soft cookie. You can bend it and it'll hang on and it has some flexibility to it where gray iron is gonna be brittle and once it gets to a snapping point, it just snaps. Okay, and then you can almost put it back together again and you never even know it was broken. I'm gonna use a center punch and a hammer. I'm gonna use a drill and maybe a grinder and maybe show you three different ways that I like to use to identify uh, which one is what. Some of these are kind of intrusive where you're grinding on it, it's gonna leave a mark. Other things like a center punch is gonna leave a really inconspicuous little mark on here that you're, it'll be hard to notice. but. What I have here is two pieces of cast iron. One of them's ductile and one of them's gray. I don't know which one's what, but let's just start with the drill. So I'm gonna drill into this cast iron, and this is a pretty common method because most of the time if there's a crack, I'm gonna drill at the end of the crack. So I kind of kill two birds with one stone. I can see what kind of material is and stop the crack from moving if this needed to be repaired. But since today we're just gonna drill to uh, just show some identification. So what we're looking for is the chips. Okay, so take a look at these chips. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're they're fairly stringy. They have they're kind of stuck together. Okay, so not quite like steel, but uh, they do have some elasticity to them, and they're gonna come out in little stringy chips. Let's drill into this piece of iron and see how it drills. And so as you can see, it just basically crumbles. You get a lot of dust and you get really small chips. So this is gray iron. So as a quick summary, this one we identified as gray iron. They're really hard to tell visually, but we know that the chips came out really small and almost powder-like on the gray. The ductile iron came out as stringy chips and it, it really did drill somewhat similar to steel. I could feel the cutting action of the drill bit actually shearing off the metal. So I'm gonna identify this one as ductile iron. The next test that this is one of my favorite tests to do because it's really inconspicuous, especially if it's a part that's visual, is a center punch test. And this can be done just somewhere out of sight, out of mind. And what I like to do is just take the center punch and just punch it just like you normally would marking something. And what I can feel on the center punch is that it raised a burr, a sharp. It's literally, if we push the metal over, it's it held together and it's a sharp burr on the side of it, okay? So this one I would also identify as ductile iron. It makes sense with the chips that came out of the hole. And let's do gray iron and see the difference. Same test on this piece. What I feel is literally nothing. It was like, uh, if I were to close my eyes, I don't feel anything there. It literally just removed all the material and just 
turned it into powder. So it's just basically a scratch. It didn't raise a burt at all, just poof. And if we hit it straight on, here's what happens when you hit it straight on. I still can't feel anything. My fingernail doesn't catch on it at all. Okay, so that this is one of my favorite tests because it's really fast. And this one I'd ID it as gray iron. Sometimes you can use a grinder test. You can actually grind and look at the sparks. I find this to be the least uh, reliable way to test, but you can look at the sparks. I, what I want to do is we're going to test them side by side. I'll split the screen so you can see the sparks on the ductile and the gray. So what I noticed with the gray iron is that the sparks don't shoot nearly as far. They're not as efficient flyers and they kind of tail off and spark at the end. And then with the ductile iron, it kind of almost behaves a little bit more like steel. They shoot further, they have more weight to them than the gray iron. This is my least favorite way to test for cast iron. So use this test if it's your only option. So we learned a little bit what we're looking for and how to test. It's now the time to test this part for the power hammer. So let's, let's use my favorite, which is the center punch test. Yeah, so it doesn't even really raise a burr. You can do it straight on. Yep, I can't feel anything. This is gray cast iron. So now let's drill it to identify the chips. Look at all those little really fine filings. This is definitely gray cast iron. This is my first step that I take when I go to repair cast iron. I hope this helps you too in your welding and your repair processes. So please subscribe if you aren't already and I'll catch you on the next one.